The stories of Flannery O'Connor are set in the Deep South, but her themes take us beyond any geographical boundaries. Her characters seem to be players in some cosmic pageant, distracted by visions and voices that do not exist for others. Her story, called The Displaced Person, is set in the difficult years of adjustment after the Second World War. On the surface, it tells what happens when a family of East European refugees comes to live and work on a small southern farm. It's the world already feeling the strain of racial conflict, obsessed personalities, and harsh economics. The new arrivals threaten to upset a very tense balance. Going to school and pretty soon the lawn is being cut. Oh, there's Miss Shortley. Mr. Shortley is my dairy man. The children are called Rudolph and the Sledgewig. Where's Mr. Shortley? I wanted to meet the Gooshacks. Chance he's in the barn. He don't have time to rest himself in the bushes like them niggers over there. Oh, what a beautiful bird. <laughs> Another mouth to feed. He rears his splendid tail. Just when it suits him. There used to be 20 or 30 of these things on the place when my first husband, Judge McIntyre, was alive, but I let him die off. I watched him scream in the middle of the night. So beautiful. A tail full of suns. Nothing but a pea chicken. I saw the flea and we must show the Gujaks the new home. Yes, sir. long enough. What'd you think about him? We've been watching. Who are they now? They come from over the water. Only one of them seems like they speak English. They're what is called displaced persons. Displaced persons? Well, now, I declare. What do that mean? It means they ain't where they were born at, and there's nowhere for them to go. Like if you was run out of here and wouldn't nobody have you? Seems they had, though. If they had her somewhere. Sure is. They here. And you all better look out now. There's about 10 billion more just like them. But I know what Miss McIntyre said. Say what? Places are not easy to get nowadays for white or black. But I reckon I know what she stated to me. You liable to have most anything. I heard her say this is going to put the fear of the Lord into those shiftless niggers. She bees like that now and then. <laughs> yes, indeed. 
You better get back in that barn and help Mr. Shortly. What you reckon she pays you for? He the one sent me out. He the one give me something else to do. Well, you better get to doing it then. I have come to take your place. You'll have to find another. Go on now. I warned you. You girls, you get in that house, you hear? Fancy, if she's seen or heard of you smoking in this barn, she'd blow a fuse. You gonna be the one to tell her? She got a nose of her own. <laughs> well, the gobble hooks are come and she wants you to meet him. Says, where's Mr. Shortley? And I said... Shut up, them weights. She don't call them the gobble hooks no longer. What does she call them? Whatever their last name is. She can say it just as plain as that priest can. The boy's Rudolph and the girl's Sledgewig. I just soon name a child of mine, Bo Weevil, a Sledgewig. You reckon he can drive a tractor when he don't know English? She ain't no better off than if she had more niggers. I'd rather have niggers if it's me. He says there's 10 million more just like them, displaced persons. She says that there priest can get her all she wants. She better quit messing with that there priest. He don't look smart, kind of poor. I ain't gonna have no Pope or Rome tell me how to run no dairy. Well, they ain't Italians, they're Poles from Poland. Where all them bodies were stacked up at, like we seen at the newsreel at the picture show. Remember all them bodies? I give them three weeks. I want to see that cut I just bought in action. For the first time, I have somebody can operate it. Mr. Guzek's a wonder. He can drive a tractor, use the rotary hay baler, the combine, the mill, or any other machine I've got around the place. Now, I hope they don't all break down. I don't worry about that. He's an expert mechanic, carpenter, a mason. He's thrifty and he's energetic. He will save me $20 a month in repair bills alone. He can work milking machines. He's the cleanest thing I ever saw. And he doesn't smoke. The niggers make you nervous. Last, I've got somebody I can depend on. For years, I've been fooling the sorry people. Sorry people. Poor oh, white trash and niggers, they drain me dry. Before you all came, I had Ringfields and Collinses and Jarrells and Perkins and Pinkins and Aaron's and God knows what all else. Well, I don't approve of trash neither. Never have. I've been running this place for 30 years and always just barely making it. People think you're made of money. I have the taxes to pay, I have the insurance to keep up, I have the repair bills, I have the feed bills. Ever since the judge died, I've barely been making ends meet, and they all take something when they leave. Niggas don't leave, they stay in steel. Nigga thinks anybody's rich he can steal from, and white trash thinks anybody's rich who can afford to hire people as sorry as they are. And all I've got is the dirt under my feet. But at last I'm saved. One fella's misery is another fella's gain. That man there, he has to work. He wants to work. That man is my salvation. I would suspicion salvation got from the devil. Now, what do you mean by that? 
I know what that girl told Annie Mould. <laughs> Said they wouldn't be able to live long with four of them on $70 a month. He's worth raising. He saves me money. Is Mr. Shortly better today? No, no, he ain't. Doctor says he was suffering from overexhaustion. If Mr. Shortly is overexhausted, then he must have a second job on the side. Oh, what is furthermore, Sledgewick said, when her papa saved the money, he was gonna buy him a used car. I can't pay him enough to save money. I'm not worrying about that. Of course, if Mr. Shortley should get incapacitated, I would have to pay him more. He doesn't smoke. It's no man that works as hard as Chancy or as, as easy with a cow, or is more of a Christian. Think how long that would have taken with many mules to do it. We'll get the whole bottom cut in two days. I bet he'd done no terrible accident, sir. What'd you say? I said, I don't trust machines like that myself. Never did. <laughs> Chancy, that this place person prowls. Prowls. Who's to say what he knows and don't know? Who's to say if he found you a still, he wouldn't go right to her and tell her about it? Maybe he wants that still for himself. Answer me! Don't worry me now. I'm a dead man. Them little eyes of his, it's fern. If everybody was as dead as I am, nobody would have no trouble. In Europe, they're full of crooked ways. We're fighting amongst each other, disputing. Then they get us into it. And they got us into it twice already, and we ain't got no more sense than to go over there and settle it for them. Chancy, do you hear me? No. I'll tell you another thing. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he don't know everything you say, whether it be in English or some other language. I don't speak no other language. I expect that for long, there won't be no more niggas on the place. And I tell you what, I'd rather have niggas than them poles. I'll tell you another thing. I get a heap out of Sledgewick. Sledgewick said in Poland they lived in a brick house and one night a man come and told them to get out of it for daylight. You believe they lived in a brick house? I is. That's just I is. I hate to see niggas run out and mistreated. When the time comes, I'll stand up for the niggas and that's that. I ain't going to see the priest drive out all the niggas. that yesterday. <laughs> Been done beautifully. I still say he ain't gonna work forever for $70 a month. Well, I may have to get rid of some of the other help so I can pay more. I ain't saying the niggas didn't have it coming to them. But they do the best they know how. You can always tell a nigger what to do and stand by him till he does it. <laughs> That's what the judge always said devil you know better than the devil you don't. Judge always said that too. When the hands were here, she used to come out here all the time and look at the angel on the judge's grave. She thought it was pretty, she said. When they left, the angel left with them. They stole it right off the judge's grave. How come they left the toes? I guess the axe old man here and used to break it off with struck too high. I've never been able to afford to have it replaced. I wouldn't want nobody but you to hear this. I know what that displaced person's really up to. Asta told me. Mouth. Yeah. No. Oh, yes. <sighs> the pole don't know any better. I reckon the priest is putting him up to it. I blame the priest. First, he's going to get her into the church. 
Then he's going to get his hand inside her pocketbook. Then he's going to try and get her to fire the niggas and bring another Polish family on the place. You watch. When you get two of them families on this place, there won't be nothing spoken but Polish. And then they'll all gang up on us shortly. That's why I'm really studying my Bible these days. I believe. Lord God Almighty created a strong people to do what has to be done. And I know I'll be ready when he calls me. And the word of the Lord came into me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy against them. Prophesy. The children of wicked nations shall be butchered. Legs where arms should be, foot to face, ear in the palm of hand. Who will remain whole? Who will remain whole? Who? to destroy. Ah, look at the little biddies. <laughs> Do you think the goose hacks will want to leave me? Do you think they'll go to Chicago or someplace like that? Well, why would they want to do that thing? Money. Give them some more then. They have to get along. <laughs> so do I. Means I've got to have to get rid of some of these others. And are the shortlists satisfactory? Five times in the last month, I have found Mr. Shortley smoking in the barn. Five times. And are the Negroes any better? They lie and steal and have to be watched all the time. So which will you discharge? I'm going to give Mr. Shortley his month's notice tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. 
where are we going? Hmm? Where are we going? Good God almighty, woman, what are you trying to do? Kill us? Go! Quit! Let's go! Quit, Ma! Let's, let's, let's go, go, Ma! Quit! Come on, now! Let's go, Ma! Come on! Where are we going, Ma? Where are we going? We can get along without them. We've seen them come and we've seen them go. Black and white. <laughs> Miss Shoutley was a good woman and I'll miss her. But as the judge used to say, you can't have your pie and eat it too. I'm glad they went of their own accord so I didn't have to fire them. People I hire always leave me, they're those kind of people. Well, we've seen them come and go. And me and you is still here. I spent half my life fooling with trashy people, but now I'm through. I don't have to put up with foolishness anymore. I have somebody now who has to work. We've seen them come and we've seen them go. However, those shortlies were not the worst by far. I well remember those Garrett's. They was before them Collinses. No, before the Ringfields. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Lord, them, them Ringfields. <laughs> oh, the herons. <laughs> Even robbed the judge's grave. None of that kind of water work. We've seen them come and we've seen them go. But we never had one before like what we got now. He can wash out the dairy and the time it took Mr. Shoudley to make up his mind he had to do it. He from Paul. From Poland. In Poland, it don't be like it bees here. They got different ways of doing. And and I don't, I don't What are you saying? If you have anything to say against him, say it and say it aloud. If you know anything he's done he shouldn't, I expect you to report it to me. It wasn't like what he should ought or oughtn't. It's like what nobody else don't do. You don't have anything to say against him. He's here to stay. We just ain't never had nobody like him before, that's all. Well, things are changing. Don't you know what's happening to the world? It's swelling up. It's getting so full of people that only the smart, thrifty, and energetic ones are gonna survive. How come there's so many extra? Because they're selfish. They have too many children. There's no sense to it anymore. What you colored people don't realize is that I'm the one around here who holds all the strings together. If you don't work, I don't make any money and I can't pay you. You're all dependent on me. But you, each and every one, act like the shoe was on marble foot. The judge say the devil he know is better than the devil he don't. The judge has long since ceased to pay the bills around here. I'm sorry that poor man has been chased out of Poland and run across Europe and come to live in a tin and shack in a strange country. But I'm not responsible for any of it. I know what it is to struggle. People ought to struggle. I've had a hard time myself, but I've survived. It ain't nothing. Where's this child? She his cousin. Well, what are you doing with it? She gonna marry me. Marry you? 
I pays half to get over here. I pays him three dollars a week. She bigger now. She his cousin. She don't care who she married. She's so glad to get away from there. I don't reckon she gonna come no how. I see you get every cent of your money back. All the same, it's always been like this. Twenty years have been beaten and done in, and they even robbed his grave. And... Mr. Gujak, you would bring this poor, innocent child over here and try to marry her to a half-witted, black, fever nigger? What kind of a monster are you? My cousin. She 12 here. First communion. 16 now. Mr. Gujak, that nigger cannot have a white wife from Europe. You can't talk to a nigger that way. You'll excite him, and besides, it can't be done. Maybe it can be done in Poland, but it can't be done here, and you'll have to stop. It's all foolishness. That nigga don't have a grain of sense, and you'll excite him. She ain't come three years. Your cousin cannot come over and marry one of my Negroes. She's 16 years from Poland. Mama die, Papa die. She wait in camp, three camp. She mama, she die in two camp. Mr. Gujak, I will not have my niggers upset. I cannot run this place without my niggers. 
I can run it without you, but I cannot run it without them. And if you mention the girl to Sork again, you won't have a job with me. Understand? I cannot understand how a man who calls himself a Christian could bring a poor innocent girl over here and marry her to something like that. I cannot understand it. She no care black. She in camp three year. Mr. Gujak, I don't want to have to speak to you about this again. If I do, you'll have to find another place yourself. Do you understand? This is my place. I say who will come here and who won't. Yeah? I'm not responsible for the world's misery. Yeah? You have a good job. You should be grateful to be here, but I'm not sure you are. Yeah? whether they come from Poland or Tennessee. I've handled herrings and ring fields and shortlist, and I can handle a goose. All my life I've been fighting the world to overflow, and now I have it in the form of a pole. You're just like all the rest, only smart and thrifty and energetic. But so am I. And this is my place. I'm under no moral obligation to keep him. We were talking about purgatory, the souls in purgatory. Thank you. I'm under no obligation to keep him. What did you say? Dear lady, have you any questions about all this? The souls in purgatory? Listen, I'm not theological, I'm practical. I'm going to talk to you about something practical. Mr. Gujak's not satisfactory. He's extra. He doesn't fit in. I have to have somebody who fits in. Give him time. He'll learn to fit in. Where is that beautiful bird of yours? Ah, I see him. Mr. Gujak's very efficient, I'll admit that. But he doesn't understand how to get on with my niggers. And they don't like him. I, I can't have my niggers run off. And I don't like his attitude. He's not in the least grateful for being here. I have to be off now. I tell you, if I had a white man who understood the niggers, I'd have to let Mr. Gujak go. He has no place to go. I know you well enough, dear lady, to know you wouldn't turn him out for a trifle. I didn't create this situation, of course. Christ will come. Like that. It's not my responsibility that Mr. Gujak has no place to go. I don't find myself responsible for all the extra people in the world. Transfiguration. Mr. Gujak didn't have to come here in the first place. 
he didn't have to come in the first place. He came to redeem us. I have to go, dear lady. Goodbye. shortly. She was God's own angel. She was the sweetest woman in the world. Where is she? Dead. No. She had herself a stroke on the day she left out of here. You don't say so. I figure that pole killed her. She seen through him from the first. She known he come from the devil. She told me so. another place now? No. You want your job back? Is the pole still here? Yes. But I'm gonna fire him on the first of the month. I'll give him his 30 days notice and then you can have your old job back in the dairy. In the meantime, you can do farm work. I just soon have my job back in the dairy right off. But, uh, I'll be willing to wait a month. It will give me satisfaction to see the pole leave the place. It will give me a great deal of satisfaction. I made a mistake bringing him here. I should have been content with the help I had in the first place and not been reaching into other parts of the world. I never cared for foreigners since I was in the war and seen what they were like. I recall the face of one man who pulled a hand grenade at me. That man had round little eyes exactly like Mr. Quasack's. Mr. Guzak is a Pole. He's not a German. It ain't a great deal of difference in them two kinds. Why don't you go back to Africa? That's your country, ain't it? I ain't going there. They might eat me up. Well, if you behave yourself, ain't no reason you can't stay here. Because you didn't run away from nowhere. Your granddaddy was bought. He didn't have a thing to do with coming. If the people run off from where they come from, I ain't got no use for them. Well, I never felt no need to travel. Well, if I was going to travel again, it'd either be China or Africa. You go to either of them two places, and you can tell right away what the difference is between you and them. You go to those other places, and the only way you can tell is if they say something. Then you can't always tell, because about half of them knows the English language. That's where we made a mistake, letting all them people on to English. There'd be a heap less trouble if everybody only knew their own language. My wife said knowing two languages was like having two eyes in the back of your head. She, you couldn't put nothing over on her. Sure couldn't. She was fine. She was sure fine. I never know the finer white woman than her. I've had a hard time getting over Miss Shortless' death. 
anyone would think she was kin to me. I've been tricked by that priest. When I agreed to bring the Gujaks here, he said there was no legal obligation to keep them here if they weren't satisfactory. After he gets them here, he has to bring up a moral obligation. My moral obligation, as I see it, is to Mr. Shaw who fought in the war for his country, not to Mr. Gujak, who's gonna come over here to take advantage of whatever he can. And I'm gonna have to have it out with that priest before I can fire him. First is come and gone. I know, but the priest hadn't called again. Well, I still ain't got my nerve job back. I should have known all along no woman was gonna do what she said she was, when she said she was. I don't know how long I can afford to put up with her shilly shally. Come on in here, give me a hand, will you? His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, as a redeemer to mankind, as a redeemer to Father all. Father Flynn, I want to talk to you about something serious. As far as I'm concerned, Christ was just another DP. I'm going to let this man go. I don't have any obligation to him. My obligation is to the people who've done something for the country, not to the ones who just came over to take advantage of what they get. I've been hanging on to this place for 30 years, ever since the judge died, always just barely making it against the people who came from nowhere and were going nowhere and didn't want anything but an automobile. And I have found out that they are the same, whether they come from Poland or Tennessee. When the Gujaks get ready, they won't hesitate to leave me. The people who look rich are the poorest of all, because they have the most to keep up. How do you think I pay my feed bills? I'd like to have my house done over, but I can't afford it. I can't even afford to restore the monument on my husband's grave. Would you like to guess what my insurance amounts to in a year? Do you think I made a money? I've decided to give Mr. Gujak his 30 days notice, the first of next month. Have you noticed that the Pole and his family are getting fat? The hollows have all come out of their cheeks. They save every cent they make. Yes, sir. And one of these days, he'll be able to buy and sell you out. I'm just waiting for the first. There's nothing for me to do but to wait, too. But I ain't gonna wait with my mouth shut.
I'm worried to death about all the bills I've got facing me. Oh, health. I'll sleep at night, and when I do, I dream about that displaced person. One night, I dreamed Mr. Gujak and his family were moving into the house. I was moving in Mr. Shortly. I didn't sleep for several nights after that. Then, one night, I dreamed that the priest came to call, and he said to me, Dear lady, I know that your tender heart won't suffer you to turn the poor man out. Think of the ovens and the boxcars and the camps and the sick children and Christ the Lord. But I said to him, he's extra. He upsets the balance around here, and I'm a logical, practical woman, and there are no ovens here and no camps and no Christ our Lord, and when he leaves, he'll make more money. Just one too many, I said. You're good? Mr. Gujak, I can hardly meet my obligations now. I have bills to pay. I too. Much bills. Little money. This is my place. All of you are extra. Each and every one of you are extra. Sometimes a man who's fought and bled and died in the service of his native land don't get the consideration of one of them like he was fighting. I ask you, is that right? I've gone over there and I fought and bled and died and I come back over here and find out who's got my job. Just exactly who I've been fighting. Was a hand grenade come that near to killing me and I seen who throwed it. Was a little man with eyeglasses exactly like his. He might have bought them in the same store. Small world. I've been telling my story to one and all who will listen. And everybody, black and white, thinks I'm in the right. I've never had to discharge anyone before. They've all left me. Oh, <laughs> my 
Had any visitors? No, sir. You're about the only one ever comes to see the poor thing. Now, where did we leave off last week? Purgatory? Yes, I think by now we have a clearer idea of that. You know, I am 80 years old. I've been a priest for 55 years. How many prayers I've said for the souls in purgatory. Yes, I think we have a clearer idea now about the souls in purgatory. Although, I wish I could question you sometimes, see what you know and don't know. Still, we were speaking of purgatory, a temporary state, though it can go on for centuries. Those souls which have not yet been cleansed for hell are doomed to hell. These souls 
have not yet attained a non-corporeal state. Therefore, purgatory must be a place. Thank you.